All right, Ooh. guys, we're going to go on to our next topic, theft at conventions and expos and swaps. Like, is that a big thing going on right now? You know, yes. Christopher, so, why don't you uh, enlighten us a little bit about some of this? Um, yeah, it's a major problem from uh, at, at all of those places. What are we, conventions? Anywhere. Store, Anywhere, like stores. I would say, like having like stores, swaps. I would say, let's begin on like conventions wise. Uh, so just like I just had Retro World Expo, um, well, but by the time this comes out, it'll be a couple months ago. Um, but I was just there, and theft was a terrible problem that we had going on. Holy yeah, it, it, and it's not just there. It's other shows. I mean, um, it's, it, we were actually trying. There was somebody that was going around that was stealing. We caught wind of it as the show owners. What, what can you do? Uh, we tried. We got a description of the guy, and we were trying to find who that person was, but there's thousands of people. But, um, and that's just one person that actually happened to catch get, a glimpse of it. A glimpse of it. Um, and I'm sure there's just tons of it that goes on. Every year we hear stories about theft. I don't understand it, why you come to the show and just go around thieving. Um, we even do an auction there, and the auctioneer caught some guy trying to put stuff in his bag, um, and he went over and said, hey, what are you doing? And the guy was like, oh, I was just putting it in my bag so I could walk over there and pay for it. And oh, I'm like, give me a yeah, break. Yeah, give me a break. And I told the auctioneer, too, I was like, hey, next time, let me know, because I want to kick those people out of the show. I don't want them to just go off and then start stealing But when are else. we bringing back good old martial law? <laughs> <laughs> when are we bringing back, like, cowboy days, like, cool, I caught you. Let's go outside and 14, go in a ring with 14 guys are going to beat the crap out of you. I, I know it's horrible. No, it, I, they deserve it. Instant karma is such a a desire. You know how awesome it'd be because uh, Chris has wrestling at his expo, and it was pretty awesome to watch. And one of the things that would be awesome is you make them sign a waiver, and they have to wrestle those people that are at the expo. No waiver. No, no waiver. waiver. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna you're, say it. you're gonna get hurt. Actually, <laughs> yeah. we're just letting you know. I was gonna say no waiver. I was at um, a different expo. And I was at my buddy Elliot's booth from Game Tower, which, by the way, Elliot's already had his entire store broken into. Remember, yeah. he lost like ten grand in inventory. Really? And like, I remember that. That was horrible, yeah. and I hate to see that stuff when I see it on Instagram. There's another uh, game shop, I think. That's, Retro Gorilla happened. Yeah, is yeah. it Retro Gorilla? Yeah. That's a, uh, I think twice they've been broken into. Yeah. And my shop was broken into uh, the one in Huntington Beach. I want to say about. Maybe a year ago now. And then your Pokemon cards? And then I had the Pokemon card incident. Um, what I've had to do on my two stores out here in California is I put up the metal sliding gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is about a five to $8,000 investment to wow, put those up. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, they're expensive. Um, I've wanted to put them up in Connecticut, but it's tough to find somebody there to actually put them up. Um, I haven't had, I, I've had a few break-ins in my stores in Connecticut, but never anybody go through the glass door like they did with at, Elliot. At, with Elliot, they did it. They went through the front door with my store, and I think Retro Gorilla, they went through the front door. Yeah. Um, and it seems to be happening more and more with yeah. video game stores. I know Elliot, is, when we were at the convention, he someone stole his, I just know it was one game, but his CIB Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Somebody took that. I actually had a video, which have gone by now, where I was there, like right after it happened, which the worst thing is, Elliot was sitting there looking sad and i didn't know what happened and i literally walked by him and said why are you so sad did gabbo steal something again as a Aww. joke <laughs> with no clue that somebody literally just stole that's tough and i felt horrible and i was like oh my gosh so i did a video basically calling out the people kind of like it with the pokemon thing but my question is like who are these losers like if you're uh, honestly if you're watching this and you are one of those, you are a genuine, real loser, low life scumbag. Like, you I really, I, I pray that you it. stub your toe every morning for the rest of your life. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. I guess we know what it's like to work hard to acquire things. So, it nothing makes me more mad than people who are doing not just like Small earning money the easy too. way but robbing others in the process yeah. of you trying to make a buck and it's they're a good small point businesses. that there's small businesses like when you rob my shop or you rob elliot or you rob retro gorilla you're not like going into even like walmart which is a big corporation like you're stealing from a small guy a person like there's a guy right there yeah you know and not to say that going to steal from walmart's any better either but no smashing grabs are huge yeah. right now at walmart but oh, especially yeah. when you're stealing from a small Jeez, shop man. though i do feel like all right, this is somebody that you're, you know, has a family and kids. It's a direct, like, you're, you're harming them. Yeah. yeah. Versus maybe a steal from a corporation. Again, not condoning that, but it's a million-dollar business. Yeah. It, to me, it feels like a, even worse when you steal from the small guy. Yeah. Um, I just don't get it. Uh, I don't like it. I don't know how to stop it, necessarily, some of the stuff that goes on. Metal bars help. Yeah. But, you know, we deal with a lot of theft in the shops. Uh, you know uh, what would help? 
better punishment when it happens. I'm True. just saying. Yeah. We're in all these cities now where you watch these videos of smash and grabs and people are running out stealing and guess what the cops can do? Nothing. Because it wasn't enough money. It has to be like over a certain... Oh, it wasn't like $1,200 worth of money, so we can't do anything. And they just watch people steal from their livelihood. It makes me so mad when I watch them. Yeah. Stealing is one of those things that just like... I was at Retro World Expo, and I was filming for Caleb, and I had one of the vendors come up. His name was Justin Spruch. Okay. He's one of the vendors. He came, comes up. He's I like, know hey. Spruch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Game hunting channel. So, like, I just Justin had, Wanaker. He's yeah. a game hunting channel? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah he's Spruch. Spruch. He's he vends every year at Retro World. He's great. So, like, he's I awesome. had just met him. Yeah, I didn't know friend. him. Yeah, I didn't end up, I ended up meeting him there. Awesome guy. And I just felt so bad. He came up to me, and I was filming for Caleb, and uh, he goes, hey, man, have you, have you seen this guy? Uh, he's walking around. Just be on the lookout for a guy who stole a CIB Evo. Ooh, that's like a Dang. what is that? A four or five hundred dollar bill? Oh man, I don't know what uh, he said. It was about a thousand bucks. It might have been sealed. It yeah. might have yeah, been sealed. It might have been all that. But like, I honestly just like in that moment, I was like, I honestly don't know what the game is, but I felt so bad because I know how much that hurts a business, right? Being small, you don't have those type of margins when you're in yeah. video game world, right? You miss a Chrono Trigger thousand dollar game. Somebody somebody sells something that's too low, right? And like it's it just happens to be like. You're in these environments where there's a lot going on. There's people rushing. There's people looking in cases. You got people going behind looking at things, and it's like you can't manage it all. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's tough when it's like you see some guy you just met, very, I would say he was like super energetic, very happy, easy going, and he just comes up to you and it just breaks that on you. And you're like, uh, yeah, he was kind of good spirit I, about he it. He posted but. about that a bunch on social media, and that he kept saying like how. He had a great weekend, even though he had an incident that kind of ruined it for him, which was yeah. that. Because I'm you know, sure it could ruin your whole goal. demeanor. Yeah. I was just recently at, at South Coast Plaza, and there was literally a sign on the door that said, due to too many smash and grabs, we will no longer have a physical store here. We'll let you know if we open. Like, like the manager, you could tell, like, typed it out and printed it off, pissed off. Like, we can't keep up anymore because people just keep running here, a group of six, seven, eight guys, and just stealing thousands of dollars of stuff not only that that's people's jobs too that's their livelihood i know it they, gets me so mad there's nothing more and this might be a sick cynical side of me when i watch youtube shorts of people that are like i don't give an f what the laws are i am retaliating and they beat the living crap out of them and i never smile bigger and i'm like <laughs> yeah. yes yes harder <laughs> yes harder Get the bigger bat next time. I can't stand these. They don't realize that, that it's not just a store. It's you. It's your wife. It's your kid. It's maybe the ability for your kid to buy football pads because now he can't because you don't have enough money. There's, it's just such a, a level of self entitlement and selfishness that my brain doesn't resonate with. It's very difficult to stop like being a store owner. Like, you know, that time that yep. happened with the Pokemon cards, like I happen to be there and people, I even talking to people afterwards were like, next time, just let the guy go. And I was like, I was like, no, like I'll put my life at risk. I was willing to go out there. Maybe the guy had a gun or a knife and maybe it was the worst decision I ever made. You know, yep. like would I want to lose my life over a thousand dollar Pokemon cards? You got to get not, them, bro. Not really, but I do got to get them all. <laughs> they knew <laughs> they, it, Pikachu's, they've been saying it all the time <laughs> Pokemon. You got to catch but them all. It was just in Instinct for me, like somebody was taking from me personally. I'm gonna. That's just who I am. I'm gonna totally. track you down. Now I didn't physically actually like hurt that guy. I went and I got them back. We know, bro. You don't say. <laughs> I mean, you should have. It, it, it came might have back. turned physical, but it didn't. Um, you know, so no, so nobody died. Nothing happened. I got my cards back. You know, a lot of times the question comes up though about like with my employees, like what would I want my employees to do in yeah, that scenario? Yeah, which you touched on. And I think we've probably talked about it on here, which is like, I have informed all of them, like, listen, guys, I'd rather lose the Pokemon cards. You don't need to do what I did. You don't need to chase down the guys. Yeah. If they did it, would I be mad at them? No. Yeah. But, but I, you know, uh, if they got hurt, I'd feel really bad. Like, I, you know, I've told you don't, you know, chase people down. But I, it's, it's a tough thing being a store owner, and you see a lot of these smash and grabs, and you wonder, like, why did, like, the CVS employee just stand there? But I think it is because yeah. they're, they're, you're, the, the, as an employer, you are telling your employees, like, listen, your life is not worth yeah. the makeup on the shelf. Like, totally. And so what's happened, though, is thieves now are like, they know that. And they're like, exactly. oh, we know that we can run in, and the employees aren't going to do anything because they're instructed not to do anything. So we know we have X period of time to run in and just grab stuff. And how you solve it, I don't really know. Yeah. Like, 
I'm not going to give my employees guns and be of like, course. hey, you know, what? somebody steals, you shoot them. Like, you just, you, you can't do it. And you want to be respectful of your employees. So I don't know what the solution is. I don't know that anybody does. Um, yeah. I really don't know how to stop it. Yep. A lot of it. It's unfortunate. Yeah. And I don't even know if I'm right. My brain goes to harsher punishment. That's just where I've always sit with a lot of things. When I see people do certain things, I, I, again, I'm watching, we watch a lot of true crime documentaries, you know, and sometimes you'll be like, that was the punishment. Like, that's it for this thing. And of yeah. course, stealing is a lot different than murdering somebody and it's case by case, but there's like people who got convicted and they murdered and somehow they got out of jail in four years. And it's like, huh? Like how that happened? Certain yeah. things. But I just, I guess where, where, what frustrates me most is it's like, almost like there is no consequence for stealing. That's why they got so popular. It's like, even if you catch them, it's like you, you might be the one to get in trouble if you do something. Yeah. If right. Heard them. If you hurt them. Yeah. And like, I don't even know what the charge is for. Like, say you went into a store and you stole a $10 item and you got caught. It's probably a misdemeanor. I don't think you get no, anything. It's, it's probably gotta be a, something like, I think it, the only time you get charged or anything, it's like above like a thousand like, bucks. Like a thousand bucks, it becomes yeah. a felony. So yeah. it's that's a misdemeanor. Only that's only here, right? Well, then it, I. Yeah, misdemeanor goes I mean, up in until. Connecticut, I would, in only Texas, is a far. nice shot to the face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get up my lawn, <laughs> 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 I, I think you're right though. Like like harsher penalties might need to be in order. Yeah, you know maybe they lower that from a thousand dollars down to a hundred bucks. Like yeah, I mean because maybe, the reality know, is that these people that are oh sorry I don't consider these scumbags I don't consider you people yeah that do this stuff they're watching the same TikToks Instagram that everybody is right oh that you can get away with that right but if now it's flipped to where every time you see one of those videos they're like and it fo it's followed up with and that guy got a year in jail and owed. He had to pay forty times what he stole. A year in jail would de deter a lot. Lost of his license, oh, yeah. like yeah. real that consequences. Be, yeah. I so. guess in like the not in the store owner, um, what's it called scenario? What would it like? What would be your recommendations if for somebody that were in a expo? Like, how would they do those preventative me measures? You know, I think it's hard without making the place look like a prison. Yeah, yeah. Like we had some comments about that um, people stealing, and they were like. As the show owners, you should do more to prevent it. And I think I replied back and I was like, we, we, we wish there was more we could do. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we got a description of the guy. It was in response to what happened to, right. um, to Justin. And we did spend some time, like I was like, I heard, I got the description on the microphone, mm -hmm. what the guy looked for. We went around looking for the guy, but again, there's thousands of people. That looked <laughs> Profiling <the same>. every <laughs> person. Yeah. So, I he mean, was a large man who games. I, <laughs> I would lose retro Rick in a crowd, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, like, think That's about it. Up. And the only <laughs> thing I could think was like, if we caught them, you know, uh, Kicking them out of the show, of course, calling the police. Yeah, uh, I don't even know if you could detain them. I yeah, guess you could try. You know, but uh, what do you tough. think, Ricky? What do you I think? think? I haven't heard. Taser them right in the face. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Ricky thinks the old fat. Give them the chancla. Chancla is not enough for that one. <laughs> uh, what about you? Honestly, what do you think? Like, what? What's your dude? Uh, I don't know, bro. I've, I've just I've seen other countries go gnarly with that kind of punishment. I kind of like it, but. Have you seen that? Oh, dude, yeah, dude. In, Iran, that would stop in, in like you. Iran or something? Like, dude, you, you, if you're a thief, people will know. You know why? Because they'll chop yeah. off a finger for finger. every time they catch you. Stealing. I mean, if you lost a finger, that would definitely <laughs> deter people. And like John Wick, where brutal. you're like, you're trying to get back in, you have to cut off your finger. And it sounds hard. I'm not saying I agree with this. I know. Thing, but it sounds hard, but there also is a level of like, guarantee you they won't do it again yeah, yeah. yeah because so many I, thieves I, and that's just the reality like even as a kid you can think of things as a kid that your parents said were like dude i would never do that again because you're like i don't want that punishment again yeah. it's a real I, thing it, it, it you learn and yes i guess like my recommendation maybe like what if you guys kind of enforce like clear bags you know what i mean that's but it's hard because what if somebody steals a copy of chrono trigger there's probably 400 of them on the floor oh yeah it's hard to know well mine had a, it's almost like yeah. Yeah. What Elliot ended up doing is he like rearranged his table after, which it, you do sadly like lose the flow because you kind of have to be like, well, I guess all the glass cases with locks are going to be in the front. Yeah. Right. So now it's people have to ask, which you lose the sense of what you're trying to build. So it's hard. But then again, he's not losing money that way. Well, and yeah. plus, as a vendor, like bringing glass showcases is such pain, a pain. Yeah. So a lot of your items, you're going to bring thousands and thousands of items and they are just going to be spread out on a table. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's so, so unfortunate. Tough. Spread out, man. Spread. <laughs> 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 I know, like you're. <laughs> <laughs>